Hello everyone. Uh, very good evening to everyone over here. I hope you all can see and hear me. I can see quite a few people on chat. I hope you guys can. Uh, I hope you guys can respond. I hope you guys can hear me. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, if you have any doubts or responses, please feel free to add on our session or on our chat box over here. So I will keep responding and I will keep looking into it. Okay, even if it takes a while, please be patient and always respond to you all. I will start off by saying good evening. Thank you for making time and coming in for our session over here today. Uh, hello to everyone in the chat box. As you all know, today's session is going to be on objectives. Okay. Uh, before you, uh, before we get started, uh, I will be sharing the material via PPT today. And if you have any doubts, I will resolve them once the presentation is done. Okay. I hope we all have a highly interactive session and we have a wonderful time. Okay. So hello to a lot of people. A lot of you guys are saying hello. I would like to tell you all the same. Hello, good evening. I hope you will all stay till the end of our session. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry that my voice is low. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me better now? Is that better? All right. Uh, all right, so I will be sharing my PPT, but before I do so, I would like to. Oh, Aditya, voice is low. Can you all hear me? Is the question right now? I can. If my voice is low, I'm trying to be as loud as possible. But if you can hear me, nothing like it. Please add and uh, yes on chat so that I will also know whether you guys can hear me or not. Okay. And before we get started, I would, of course, like you to get introduced to the very various things that we are offering over here at Let's Do. So I am going to share a few links on chat. I hope you all would uh, definitely go through the links. OK, uh, a little bit after the session would be better. OK, so I have added the link to our website which is going to take you to a lot of courses that we have over there. OK, so which is actually going to be very useful for all of you. OK, so I can also tell you that, uh, you know, once we get into things, we are we have a lot of courses. One of the most important courses that we have is, of course, our spoken English course. And uh, we also have a very we also have a book coming up a book on grammar. So we will be giving you updates over here at these sessions. So I want you all to keep attending as much as possible. OK, please go through the chat to get all the links that I'm putting. And it will be easier for all of us. OK, so and I'm also putting the link to our magazine, Just English. We will be releasing it soon. Every Saturday it releases in the evening. Please see. We have a very interesting uh, sort of a topic this time. It is going to be on World Emoji Day. OK? All right. So I'm going to share my screen now. And I hope you all can see my screen. OK? I am going to share my screen now. If at all you have any issues or if you feel that you can't see it, please feel free to use the chat box. OK? I will try to be as responsive as possible. OK? as I'm sharing my screen. If you at all you feel that you're not able to see anything, if at all it feels a little bit confusing, please feel free to stop me. I will help you all out. OK? I hope you can see my PPT. OK? And whoever is coming in, a warm welcome to all of you, of course. A warm welcome to all of you, whoever is joining in, whenever. OK? So I have started the PPT. Okay, so I will be getting into the topic now. And we will also have a fun interactive session after the topic is done a little bit. So please stay tuned for that as well. As you all know, today's lecture is going to be on adjectives. Right? I am Shweta Vaidyanathan and I am from Let's Do It as you know, and I will be taking today's presentation. Okay, 
So let's get started. So before we start any lecture, we have to give you the objective. Now, what is objective? Objective means aim, right? It means what we will accomplish after this lecture or what we are going to accomplish through this lecture, right? I'm going to teach you what is an objective, what are the types of an objective, what are degrees of objectives, and we're going to do a few exercises, okay? So let's get started bit by bit. Okay. And um, just a second. Yeah. An adjective. So I will be reading out the content and I will also be explaining the content as I read it. Okay. An adjective modifies a noun or pronoun by providing descriptive or specific detail. Okay. So what an adjective does, at the very basic version of it is a descriptive word. Now, what is descriptive? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me what is descriptive? When I say the word describe, it means to explain something, to give further details about something, right? Now, I've also contrasted one more concept that we do know. But that concept is adverbs. Unlike adverbs, adjectives do not modify verbs, other adjectives or adverbs. Adjectives only modify nouns or pronouns. Okay? By modify, what do you mean? They give information. Okay? Usually, adjectives precede the noun or pronoun they modify. Precede means what? Come before. Succeed means come after. Proceed, succeed. They both are opposites. Okay? Adjectives do not have to agree in number or gender with the nouns they describe. Absolutely not. Uh, when it comes to uh, an adjective, it is just giving description. So it doesn't have to do that. Adjectives answer the following questions. What kind, how many, which ones? Remember, whenever you are trying to understand these parts of speech, whatever we are learning, nouns, adjectives, words, etc., come under the banner of parts of speech. Whenever you are trying to understand parts of speech in a sentence, whenever you are trying to identify them, you have to ask questions to the sentence. I'll tell you how to do that. It is a very fascinating thing. Once you ask questions to a sentence, you will get answers. With that, you can identify the different parts of speech. Okay? So, I hope this slide is clear. Any doubts, please add it on chat so I can uh, take it. We are going to do next the types of adjectives. We have seen what is an adjective. Now, we are going to see types of adjectives. First one, qualitative adjectives or otherwise we can also say adjectives of quality. Don't worry. There are many different ways to talk about it. Even when you look online, you are going to see many different ways. Both are equally correct. Adjectives of quality describe the noun. That is, they tell us about the quality of the person, place of thing to which we are referring. Quality. Whenever I say something is of good quality, you know inherently it is good. That is what the word quality means. It gives us an idea about something. Right? Let us look at the examples. I have a fast car. What kind of car do I have? Not any kind. Fast car. Now over here the word fast, what does it give me an idea on? It gives me an idea about the speed of the car. Fast. Right? I am hungry. The word hungry is providing information about the subjects, which is why. The hungry cats are crying. Right? I saw a flying cat. Now, this is a very imaginative sentence. Right? Qualitative adjectives. Okay? In the last sentence, the word flying necessarily is not an adjective, it's just an imaginative sentence that was made. Okay? So, we have adjectives. Adjectives of quality. Right? Quantitative adjective. Quantitative seems like a very complicated words. 
very simply put this is adjectives of quantity quantity always answers the question how much or how many it always gives a number or an approximation of a number this is very closely combined with numeral adjectives as well which we will see okay for instance i have 20 rupees in my wallet 20 how many how much sorry 20 they have five children how many five you should have completed the entire biryani or you should have eaten the entire biryani be better entire over here gives the quantity much and many let us look into these words Whenever we use many, it is usually something that is related with numbers. How many dogs do you have? I have two dogs. Much is related with uncountable things. In English, when we talk about countable and uncountable, it is very different. Countable in English is things that can be numerically calculated. For instance, 10, 9, 100, all of that is numerically calculated. Uncountable is things that can only be measured by weight. Much is always for such quantities. For instance, rice. We can't sit and count every grain of rice that comes under uncountable. It can only be measured. One kilo of rice, half kilo of rice that comes under uncountable. Okay. Now, closely related to this, we are going to see numerous. This is not an exact type. I want to take up two of two very important concepts. That's why I have put this like this. It's very much a part of adjectives of quantity, but I have taken it up separately so I can tell you two very important concepts. Okay, definite. Anytime you see the word definite, it means exact. Definite is always exact number. And there are two types of numbers. What are they? Cardinal and ordinal. When I say something is a cardinal number, it starts from 1. What are ordinals? 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, etc. Those come under ordinals. When I say something is indefinite, the quantity is unknown. Right? It's not exact. This things like some, enough, many, whole, entire, it is indefinite. Now let us go back to the examples that we had. 20 rupees, 20. Cardinal or ordinal, can anyone tell me? 20. Cardinal, yeah, ordinal. Of course it is a cardinal number. Right? It's a cardinal number. Ordinal numbers are not there in any of this. We have five. Again, a cardinal number. You should have completed or eaten the entire biryani. Okay. I'm so sorry. I ended up pressing too hard. And just right. Demonstrative adjective. Okay. Now, what is demonstrative? Whenever you demonstrate something, what are you going to show in something? You're displaying something. That is exactly what this adjective does. A demonstrative adjective directly refers to something or someone. Demonstrative adjectives include the word this, that, these and this. Demonstrative directly refers. Okay. Now let us look at this, that. Let us look at the meaning. When do we use this? When do we use that? This is something that is close to you. In terms of physical distance. This is my ear pods case because it's very close to me. I can touch it. That is my chair. It is far away. I can't touch it. These and those are used as plural. This and that singular. These and those plural. Okay. Now let's look at the examples. Remember when it comes to this, that, these, and those as adjectives, the verb will, uh, sorry, the noun will come directly after it. When I say this is my airports, that's not a demonstrative adjective. 
right? I have to, when I say, these AirPods are mine, then it becomes a demonstrative objective because the noun is coming directly after it. Let's look at the example. That building is so gorgeous, singular and far away, right? This car is mine, very close by, singular. Again, these cats are cute, these very close. I love cats, so of course you're going to see a lot of cat based sentences coming up. Okay, demonstrative adjective. I hope there's no confusion. Any doubts? Obviously, the chat is always open for all of you. Okay, I'm going to go on to the text type now, which is interrogative adjectives. When I say interrogative, interrogation, it means asking questions. Just like that, interrogative adjectives are used to ask a question. Why do you ask a question? To get an answer. Right? Now remember, an interrogative sentence and an interrogative adjective is very different. You shouldn't confuse between the two. Interrogative adjective, anytime it is used, the verb, the noun will immediately follow it. That is the major difference. We will look through all of the examples. An interrogative adjective must be followed by a noun or a pronoun. This is compulsory. Okay. There are only three interrogative adjectives. Which, what, whose. Only three, three W words. These words will not be considered adjectives if the noun does not follow right after them. Absolutely. Why? Then it will become an interrogative sentence. What is that? Interrogative sentence. Right? What game is that? Interrogative adjective. Okay? Now let us look at the example. Which phone do you use? Over here, which is of course a interrogative adjective. It is followed by the noun phone. What game do you want to play? Obviously, a Interrogative adjective because it is followed by the noun game. Whose car is this? Remember, whose is always very possession to show, to show possession. Whose car is this? Immediately followed by the noun car. Right? Whose car is this? Whose always shows possession? Even when it is used as a normal interrogative. Okay. I am going to move on to the next one. As usual, chat box, doubts I will sort out once the session, once I finish this. Okay. Articles. Now, articles are also considered to be a type of adjective. Now, what are articles? We only have three. A, an, and the. Very good. Now, what to, how do they modify the noun? They modify the noun in many different ways. One, by showing the number of something. A and an is for singular. The is, of course, definite. Can be used for both singular and plural. A and an, again, A is for consonant sound. An is for vowel sound. Remember, consonant sound, vowel sound. Not consonant and vowel. Because people end up getting very confused. They think, okay, anytime something starts with a consonant, you immediately put A. No. Consonant sound. Okay, let us slowly go through this. Articles also modify the noun. What does modify mean again? Give description. So articles are also adjectives. Articles determine the specification of the noun. We saw specification. That's why we have two types of articles. What are they? Definite article, indefinite article. Definite article is the indefinite article is a and an. Okay. Now, as usual, I've just gone, gone ahead and explained that. Okay. Examples. Like I said, we're going to have a lot of cat-based sentences. A cat is always afraid of water. It's very sad. They are, they are quite afraid of water. They do not enjoy baths or things like that. A uh, cat's in gender. Second sentence is very sad. The cat is afraid of me. It is not just any cat. It is sadly my neighborhood, uh, my neighborhood cat, which seems to be very afraid of. Me. It's a very specific cat. 
An electronic product should always be handled with care. Something my mother tells me very often, something I bravely try to do because they are very fragile. Now, what does the word fragile mean? They are very delicate, must be handled with care. Okay, uh, let us go to comparative degree of adjectives. Okay, now degree of adjectives. Okay. The three degrees of adjectives positive, comparative, superlative. Three degrees. Now, what are we going to do? Qualitative adjectives or adjectives of quality, when they are taken in three different situations, it becomes comparative degree of adjectives. Okay, I'm going to read it out and don't worry, we will go. We'll go into it. Adjectives are used to describe some quality of a person or thing that we are talking about. So sometimes the extent or the degree of the quality needs to be mentioned in comparison to that same quality in another object. Anytime we put comparative, comparison. So what does this do? It helps us compare this. Okay. Positive degree. Positive degree, remember, is only comparison to one thing. That is, you are making a general statement. Hmm? Today is a good day. It is a general statement. Okay? It is just giving the quality of something. That's it. No comparison, nothing. It is just giving. Look at this. Let's read it out and let us analyze. This is the adjective in its simple form. It is used simply to denote the existence of a particular quality in the person, place or thing we are talking about. My suitcase is heavy. This is a statement I am making. My suitcase is heavy. Now comes the comparative degree. I am going to compare my suitcase with someone else. Right? What happens? A higher degree must be used. Because I am saying, Aapse zada mera hai. So I have to use the comparative degree. How do I do that? This form of adjective that describes a higher degree, that particular quality, than the positive degree. So this is the second level. What I am doing? I am comparing my thing with someone else. Look at that. My suitcase is heavier than yours. First sentence, my suitcase is heavy. General statement. Then imagine my friend comes in and I am telling her, my suitcase is heavier than yours. Comparative. With one thing. Okay, now let us go to superlative degree. Anytime you hear the word super, it always means it is the highest. That's why we have superman, superstar. There is none higher than superstar. Super goes to the highest form. Okay, this form is the adjective that describes the highest degree of that particular quality. Highest is the apex. It is used when I am comparing it with more than, yeah, more than one person. I am just not even my friend. Imagine I am standing in the platform and comparing my suitcase with every other person in the station. Then it becomes super negative. My suitcase is the heaviest of all. Positive, comparative, super negative. Positive, today is a good day. Comparative, today is better than yesterday. Better, I'm comparing it with yesterday. Hmm? Superlative, today is the best day of the year. What did I do? I compared today with all the days in the year. Hmm? I hope the, this is very, very important. And let us look at some sort of examples that we have. I'm sorry, my table didn't come out very well. It's basically taking up these concepts, okay, what we learned, okay. Most of the time, what happens is when we use positive, comparative, super most words, we do it like this, sweet, sweeter, sweetest, ER for comparative, EST for super -native. but when it comes to other words, they are called as irregular words, 
you see good better best becomes another example is there any problem with my audio are you guys not able to hear me anything uh if it is please add on chat because i heard one person say that the audio is not clear if anybody is having any trouble please feel free to add on chat so that i will no immediately okay so i'll just quickly wrap this up and i'll be taking all your doubts in some time now okay good better best good what happens good is like irregular good is the first positive comparative better superlative best bad worse worst i'll give you an example this uh, hotel is bad this hotel is worse than that one this is the worst hotel okay i would like a little coffee i would like less coffee than him i would like the least amount of coffee okay anything please let me know now i'm going to enter the chat and i'm going to help you out with all your doubts and then we'll come back to the exercises okay so i would like to clear your doubts and then i would like to come back to the exercises okay everyone what are the doubts okay vaiga what does voice mean can you hear me or not please tell me clearly everyone okay let's see adjective of quantity very very simple quantity always gives a number how much we saw that in the slide how much i have 20 rupees 20 becomes the adjective of quantity it is all the numbers another set of quantity that we have is indefinite right it is indefinite so basically that will become words like few several i have few boxes few how many few okay anybody else any doubts anything in terms of audio is there anything that you want me to work on please let me know i am going to share the segment where we are going to have some exercises because i saw that most of them had ideas about adjectives of quantity what is the another example that you wanted mom dish please let me know so that i am not able to understand which one okay and who else who else any other doubts yes i have some new comments no map no doubts okay i'm going to share the slide again i would appreciate it if you guys can actually look through and uh, let us solve problems now okay let us solve some exercises because like we saw in our uh, agenda we first have our we first have our adjectives we learned what are the types of adjectives now we have to do some exercises i hope you all can see the screen okay please answer the question is there dash water in the jar water countable ya uncountable quantity you have to use adjective of quantity what can you use for adjective of quantity anyone anyone please let me know there is some water in the jar yes very good it is on the counter there is some water in the jar you will not say few no you will not say few there is, is there any water in the jar yes kanvaniya absolutely absolutely this is there some water in the jar is there any water in the jar is there a little water in the jar absolutely hmm? dash pen is mine you have to use a a demonstrative adjective what will come in and it's also singular only so you only have two options to either be the pen is mine if it is close by or waha par hai to that pen is mine right there are dash eggs in the bowl this is a number i made it easy 
have to put a definite number. How many ever eggs you want, you put in the bowl. They are 10 eggs in the bowl. They are 12 eggs in the bowl. Whatever you wish, right? Do you have a dash car quality? What kind of quality can we give to a car? Can anyone tell me? 22. <laughs> That's really the 22 eggs in the bowl. Good one. Do you have a dash car? What kind of cars can we have? We can say fast. We can say old. I have an old car. I have used a. So that's, that's another thing as well. If I use a and you have an old car, you have a fast car, you have a, an expensive car. Do you have a, what can we say? Do you have a cheap car? <laughs> that's not a nice question. That becomes more insulting. Do you have or oh, anything, anything that we can relate to cars? Dash is your name, interrogative. Do you have a branded car? Absolutely. Wow, we are going to the fancy territory, huh? Absolutely. Dash is your name, interrogative. Absolutely, there's only one. Amongst our three, what we choose, there's only one answer. What is your name? Very good. What is your name? Absolutely. Okay, now let us come to our, what did we see next? Comparatives, you know, we saw how we have to use the degree of adjectives. What does the dash use? Late, later, latest. What should be the answer? I'm also giving you the degrees as well. I'm making things easier for you. What is the, always one more hint that I'll give you. In a superlative sentence, there will always be our beloved the. It will always be there. What is the latest news? What is the latest news? Amit is the dash of the two brothers. What's happening over here? We are having a comparison. Two brothers, we say Amit. What is Amit? Is he old or older? You can say Amit is the old. Old, yeah, older. Older of the two brothers. Okay. Today is the dash day of applying. What can we say? But do we have any uh, positive comparative superlative degrees for this word last? That's a fun question that I want you all to solve. That's a fun question. Or is it a trick question that I've added it over there? I want you all to think on it and let me know. Okay. This car is in a dash condition than that one. Today, this car is in a Dash condition than that one. Comparison. Bad, worse, worst. Yes. Today is the last day of the life. Oh, ma, Suti, that's such a dark sentence. Today is the last day for applying. Okay. And we are done with this as well. Now I'm going to open up the floor and I'm going to let you. Guys, ask me questions. Play free fire. I wish I could have run. Uh, but I am not a gamer. So, more is the pity. Okay. That. Ma'am, the other exercises are not presented. Oh, I'm sorry, Stuti. Let us see what's happening. I shall try my best to just share it once again. I think those were the last exercises that I had. I think that's why you didn't see much. Okay. So the, I hope I sorted it out. If there's any doubts, please feel free to let me know. Uh, please don't spam on the chat. I would really appreciate it if you don't spam on the chat. Okay. 
Anything else, anyone, anything that you need to ask? Please explain about abstract now. Okay, Dushan, because I can explain, I can do that. Uh, again, now we have coming back to another topic. So what happens is during our doubt clearing session, students have a variety of doubts, so we switch. So abstract now. Remember, whenever you can touch something, let's take this uh, ear pod case, for example. I can touch it. I know how it feels like. I can feel its texture. It is something that is tangible. Right? But there are many things in the world that you cannot physically interact with. Things such as emotions and feelings. Those things are called as intangible. Anything that comes under abstract noun is intangible. You cannot touch it. You cannot smell it. You cannot see it. But you can feel it. Those things come under abstract noun. Things such as intelligence. Courage. All of these things are intangible because they are qualities of a person. That's what is known as an abstract noun. Okay? Ah, wonderful, Suti. Very smart of you, no doubts. Illusion labels, I hope that cleared that out uh, about abstract noun. Anything else anybody wants to add? Yes, you can't see music, but can we hear it? Okay, but then you can still. Get one sense is still working, no? It's still working, no? You can still have one sense, one of the tangible senses are still working, right? Nishka, what do you want me to repeat? Please tell me. Tell me what you want to repeat. You may type in and you can let me know. Repeat what? Abstract noun or something else. Please add so that I can help you better, okay? Uh, anybody else, anything you guys want to add? Please don't ask me to play free fire. I'm here to teach grammar. Okay. Ha, Anishka. About abstract. Okay. Many things in the world that we can interact with physically. I took the example of this year pod case. You can touch it. Right? You can touch it. It's tangible. Anything that is abstract, Nishka, remember you can only feel. Things such as bravery, courage, kindness, intelligence, all of that comes under abstract now. Because I cannot physically interact, but emotionally I feel it. Even when it comes to art, have you noticed abstract art is just squiggles and it is not, it is not a particular painting of something. Because it is supposed to make you feel something. Right? I hope that cleared it up. Mishka, I hope that cleared it up. Okay, Ganga, Bijakumar, C. Ma'am, can you explain, please explain about pronouns? Oh, absolutely. What are pronouns? Suppose I'm making a sentence, okay? Jitin has a computer. Jitin plays on his computer. Jitin likes his computer. Now what's wrong with the sentence? The word Jitin is getting repeated like anything. Jitin, Jitin, Jitin. So what do you use? You use a pronoun. A pronoun is a word that you use instead of a noun. Now Jitin is a man's name. Considered to be a boy's name. So we use the pronoun he. Jitin has a computer. He likes playing with the computer, etc. Whatever I had made. In the past, you will substitute Jitin, the repetitions of Jitin with he. Suppose I'm talking about myself. Can I say, Shweta is taking class. Shweta is answering doubts. I am taking the class. I am answering the doubt. So whenever I talk about myself, I use the first person, which is I. Now, when I talk about Ganga, I will use the second person, which is you. Right? Suppose I'm talking about my neighbors. Okay, my neighbors Vidya and Sara. I'll say she. If it is a man, I will say he. He, she, they. These are all what comes under pronouns. Now he is used for a man, she is used for a woman. They, of course, has no such thing. It is plural. Regardless of the gender, 
can you say? Okay. Another thing about pronouns, you. I think in Hindi we have to men up. In English it is just you. If you're talking about the other person, it is just you. Regardless of their uh, gender or orientation, you can use you. First person is always I. Yes, first person is I. Right? And uh, second person is you. Very good, very good, Stuti. You are answering very well, very good. Uh, Ganga Abhiju, I hope that clears it up. Uh, I also forgot to take up uh, we. Sorry. We is, of course, whenever you are a part of the gang. Suppose you and your friends are going together. You would say, We are going to the mall. We, because you are part of the gang. Suppose your friends are going with someone else, then you would say, They are going to the mall, but I am not in. Remember, whenever there is a sentence where there are three people, for instance, my mother, my brother, and I, you will always put I at the last. Why? It is a sign of respect that you are putting the other person first. For instance, I will say, Ganga and I are playing cricket. I will always come at the end. Okay? And I hope you can... I hope it's sorted out. How to differentiate between adjective and adverb? Interesting question. Remember the adverb, adjective will always modify only a noun. This is a car. This is a fast car. It modifies the noun car, right? By pointing out the fact that it is very fast. It gives information about the car. Okay. When it comes to adverb, they do a lot of things. They say that most adverbs end with L Y. Most of them do. Most of them don't. Right? This car runs quickly. The word quickly tells you how it runs. It is modifying the verb. So an adverb is very, very, very uh, broad. Right? It modifies an adjective. It modifies a verb. It also modifies another verb, another adverb. This car runs very quickly. The word very becomes a Another, for, uh, an adverb which modifies another adverb. Too much, very quickly. I hope that you heard it up. Okay. Uh, who else? Now, there are some people who write bad things to get attention. Such people will not be entertained. And it is very Difficult that such people enter a chat when there is obviously, you know, when we are teaching something good and they suddenly bring in bad language. Uh, if possible, I would strongly suggest that you learn some manners. And I'm sure that your parents are probably very ashamed of the way that you're behaving. So please don't use this, uh, you know, forum to talk about unnecessary words, right? Takur, I think you can use a earphones. I'm doing the best that I can in terms of voice. Okay. So everyone, can you please ignore the certain trolls who come in here than, and use bad words. Right. So we are going to completely ignore what they say. Okay. Anybody else? Any doubts? Uh, English is the only language in which the elders or the young are treated as you. Yeah, but then if you think about respect in general, if you talk in a respectful tone, it doesn't matter which pronoun we use, right? We can use tum and up as well it is in a very disrespectful manner. What matters is the way you use it. Even if you're using you, be as respectful as possible. That's what I would say. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Any doubts? Anything that you want to add, please feel free to add. And then again, I'll tell you all, whoever joins such sessions, let us be as polite as possible. Let us not, uh, what do you say, be immature or behave badly. That's something that is, you know, you have to make yourself proud. And what is in the internet, nobody will forget, right? Yes, in, it's very important. I'm not saying that we should not pay importance to our 
native language, a mother tongue that we are born with, but English is a global language that all of us must learn, right? Who speaks English with confidence? Uh, okay. You speak English with confidence only when you practice, only when you attend sessions, push yourself out there. It's important more than speaking, speaking any language with confidence, no? Makes you better. For instance, if you speak Hindi confidently, make that work. But English is just as important. So what I would suggest is that you read a lot, attend session, go towards grammar seminars, and grow. That is how you learn. Okay. Yes, Vidya. Uh, every Saturday we have it from from we have it from five to five forty-five six. We take depending on the number of students. But we have it every Saturday, Vidya. I hope you will attend. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, ah, there are some really nice trolls today. Yeah, I think with the trolls should end themselves. That would be fun. Anyway, I have a problem to write. Don't worry about it, Takur. I think you should practice. Every day, practice. Read a lot of uh, newspapers. They read a lot of newspapers and try to watch a lot of English news. Do it bit by bit. Okay? So, any other doubts, anyone? I am going to end the session and I suggest that I would like to see you all the next session and I hope that we all are able to have a wonderful session ahead and let's have, let's keep it clean. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep our language study. If anything, anyone has learned, please learn to always be polite no matter where you are. No matter how old you are and always be nice to everybody right okay guys it was wonderful see you all next week and uh, i hope you'll attend the next session i hope we'll all have a wonderful time together learn something new and as per usual i want you all to go over the links that i've sent sent across over here of course our let's do website uh, link Right. Let's do that cycling, which you can go through to get to all of our courses. Right. Please go ahead. Our spoken English course link is also there. Right. And thank you so much, Nishka. It's for people like you that we come over and we want to give you all a wonderful session. This is what we want. We want people to study. We want people to grow. There are all kinds of people out there, but the people who are here to study, I wish them all the best. And I wish you all a very wonderful weekend and see you all next week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay safe. And please go through the links that we have sent. Read our magazine. Go through our blogs. Learn more. Grow. That's all that matters. Okay? See you all. Bye-bye.